Good afternoon, good weekend. I'd like to welcome you back into the Foul Playland and I want to give you some boxing perspective regarding the proposed Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury fight that's being rumored to being worked towards behind the scene. And um, uh, my perspective is more so on why does it seem like there's such a rush to make the Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua fight where there wasn't that much of a rush or that much of a push to um, make the Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua fight. Um, both of those fights, um, when you're talking about Anthony Joshua versus either Tyson Fury or Deontay Wilder, um, would have been for or can be for unification because uh, Wilder held the belt. And that could have been a unified unification match uh, where all four of the major belts would have been consolidated. And Tyson Fury is currently holding the WBC title, so that can also be a unification fight for all for the belts. Um. So the same stakes were going to be at play no matter what. I think um, commercially, um. I would argue that the Wilder fight here uh, in America or here domestically and in the U uh, would have would have done a lot better than a um, than a Fury Anthony Joshua match, um, especially if you're fighting in the uh, UK time zone or the Euro or a European time zone. Um, I think it would make more money um, here in America because you have the biggest pay per view market. Um, in addition to still getting a share of the pay-per-view market in the UK. Now, you're not going to get as much um, of the um, buying ability in the UK if you fight in an American time zone because the time difference is five hours ahead here in the US. But you're still going to get a share of it in addition to um, getting... Um, or uh, you know a lot of the UK of the US market, so I think that a lot of um, what they would sell if they fought here in the US, um, be, that being Tyson Fury and um, Anthony Joshua, they could have got that and maybe more if they would have fought Wilder because Wilder already had a share of the US market. He had this uh, um, unbeaten record. Um, he had these uh, highlight reel knockouts. You know, Fury, his highlight is, you know, surviving Wilder and then coming back to beat, coming back and beating Wilder after, you know, after the fact. But he still um, won't have that share of American fans that I think Wilder would have brought to the table had they had fought and win. Um, 2017 2018 when these fights against uh, between Wilder and AJ were first happening so um, money wise I think I would have edged it more towards Wilder um, back then if Wilder and AJ would have fought when Wilder held the belt more so than the money that they would get um, if Wilder and AJ I mean if Fury and AJ were to fight now because I don't think they would get as much of the American share as they could have gotten had it been Wilder holding the belt before. Um, but the reason I think that, I mean, there's a lot of reasons as to why they're rushing to make this fight rather than where you didn't see a lot of that same motivation when Wilder held the belt. Um, I think um, one of the main reasons I want to discuss first is that a lot of these boxing promoters um, are very unimaginative. So you have um, a UK versus the US match. Um, I think that could have been spun very well, but um, it would not, I mean, like, you know, um, being that they're both brothers, they're both black fighters, um, you know, I think that did factor into it as far as, you know, the dollar signs go. I mean, if you want to make an argument that Ruiz had a share of the Mexican market and um, when he fought Anthony Joshua and Anthony Joshua, of course, had like, you know, some black mark, some of the black um, market or um, some of the um, or all of the UK market. Sure. But uh, 
Um, Andy Ruiz wasn't a major draw like that. Um, where what well, like what like Wilder was, you know, nobody was expecting Andy Ruiz to to beat um Anthony Joshua. Um, the first time around, but um, I think that a lot of these promoters, unless like they usually try to go with that same formula, like a Mayweather formula, where they try to pair up uh black fighters with a Mexican fighter or with a Puerto Rican fighter or with the white guy. Or, uh, you know, it's it, it's very, um, it's very um, cookie cutter. And like for them and um, for them to go outside of that mold, it's it's just a pain in the ass. Like, you know, where they don't have that motivation to do it. I'm not saying it's right. I think it's stupid. You know, um, I see, you know, you've seen a lot of good cases of fights that were successful between two uh, black fighters. Um in recent history, Mayweather had fought um, Shane Mosley, and that was a uh, beaten many times Mosley already, and that was a uh, commercial success here in America. Um, you know, uh, Mayweather started walking away from that formula, um, I think because of the fighters that were available to him, um, the ones that were monetarily going to bring in the most at that time, you know, when he when he reached that top of the apex level, I mean, it made a little bit more sense for him than um, it does for these other promoters when they just try to work based solely on that formula where they try to clash two races against each other. But I think in Anthony Joshua's case, back then when it came to Wilder, I thought Anthony Joshua may have... Um, voiced some trepidation like or i think there was a little bit of fear factor and not a little bit i think there was a, a legit fear factor for either anthony joshua to get in the ring with uh with wilder from anthony joshua himself or from the match room and hern camp i think some of that may have come from anthony joshua himself because when anthony joshua beat um uh, Klitschko, he went on to call Fury out immediately in the ring, and Wilder was actually um, in the in the stands that day. He was in the in the stadium. And he didn't call him out, and Wilder was already a champion at that point. He didn't call him out at all, and he was always very non-committal in his callouts of uh, Wilder. Um, you know, in the years after that, like he was very. Um, you know, he'd call him out like twice a year. Like he'd get pressured into qu into answering questions about Wilder. Whereas with Fury, he's very motivated to fight him. Seemingly, as far like you know, he, he off the rip wanted to fight Fury. But um, you know, if it was coming from Hearn or from or from the Hearn, you know, I I um I get it. I mean, it sucks. I mean, I think the Eddie Hearn and especially in Barry Hearn, got a lot of ire because of that, because they were um, putting them, uh, Eddie Hearn especially was putting himself as the front man and he would devalue Wilder's worth while bigging up AJ's worth and making it seem like um, unless Wilder came to these um, really, really harsh terms that he wouldn't be able to get the AJ fight. And even then when Wilder was willing to fight AJ for 15 million, they changed that date to... Um, for rather it being AJ's next fight, it was going to be a fight down the line. And AJ ended up fighting uh, Alexander Povetkin at that point. Um, that just shows uh, fear to me. Now, um, if that fear was coming from Anthony Joshua and Anthony Joshua told Eddie Hearn, like, hey, listen, you know, I think this guy is going to um, put me in a coffin. Um, now, me as a promoter. I'm not going to tell Anthony Joshua, like, you know, or I'm not going to tell the fans, like, listen, Anthony Joshua's not ready or Anthony Joshua doesn't want that fight. Um, I'm going to say a lot of the stuff that Eddie Hearn said, like, you know, this guy's not worth it. You know, we could fight Povetkin. We could fight uh, Dillian White. We could fight Takam. You know, we could fight Parker. We don't need Wilder. Like, you know, but the last thing that's going to come out of my mouth as a promoter of my own fighter is going to be that, you know, my fight is buns. You know, he don't want that fight. So 
if it was Anthony Joshua voicing those concerns, which I think it was, um, that's just my conclusion, then Eddie Hearn due diligence would be to make every excuse in the book, like to try to get him out of that uh out of that fight, you know. Um but um you know and I think um kind of going back to like the unimaginative like I mean like and it's one of the like one of the things with these big money fights which which pisses me off about boxers is that when you have uh these big money fights it doesn't hurt to fight rematches in these cases um in fact AJ already said um yesterday in a sporting news article that he would be willing to sign up to fight Tyson Fury two times in uh the year 2021 you could pretty much uh, assume that that might be uh, AJ's next fight and Tyson Fury's next fight back, if that's the case, if if they had it their own way because of the uh, coronavirus shutdowns and maybe they need time to prepare. But he's willing to sign up for uh, a ma- uh, two times against um, Tyson Fury in 2021, meaning like, you know, if they take on um, a fight apiece in September, let's say, then they're, then they're trying to leave their calendars open to fight each other. In 2021, and um, I think that makes just uh, monetary sense for them because you know, match one would be big, and then match two would be bigger, and then you could probably run it back three times. And it's not like neither one of these cats are young. Anthony Joshua is now 30 years old. Um, so uh, what kind of pisses me off with these fights or with the with the fans when they would try to like talk bad about not making the Wilder fight is that no matter what, if Wilder and AJ would have fought back then, AJ was a, like, you know, 28 at least at that point, 29 many points when these discussions were being made, you know, you're talking about like maybe potentially having um, three fights against each other. At the very least, they would have been a rematch, you know, but if you fight three times, imagine how much money they would have made um, between uh, Wilder and uh, Anthony Joshua. The same could be said for uh, Wilder and, uh, I mean, uh, Joshua and Fury, or Wilder and Fury, if you will. Wilder and Fury Part 3 is going to make a lot of money. You know, a lot more money than the two previous matches. So, um, Anthony Joshua, I mean, like, um, if, you know, all the people that come to his defense in in, in all of this, when it came to Wilder um, fighting him... um, you know, you got a factor that that fight could have been um, had like three times over. But the problem with that is if Wilder would have uh, taken him out of there, like um, especially early on, then a lot of the um, the air would have been going out of the Anthony Joshua balloon. Um, and, espe- it, you know, and Wilder does have that potential to get you out in round one, round two, you know, um, they probably thought maybe they won't be that ability to fight three times if he could get us out of there two times, like, fast. You know, so um, they that had to have cro- has had to have crossed their mind before because with Fury, I mean, he doesn't necessarily have that same knockout ability. And um, especially if they fight somewhere, like, that's friendlier to the uh, matchroom camp, you know, um, and it goes to a decision. Maybe if it's a close fight, they would try to get the decision towards uh, Anthony Joshua's direction. Then that sets you up for uh, a rematch again. Maybe if it's a close fight and uh, Fury wins, that still sets you up for a rematch again. No matter what, and like, you know, and if he knocks him, and if whoever knocks whoever out in the second fight, you know, that's three times you're going to fight. At the end of all that, Anthony Joshua would be like 32 years old at the at the most, you know? So he's already like going into near the twilight of his career at the end of all these, you know, a three-peat big money-making match, which, um, you know, that's what a lot of these boxers um, should be doing. Now, I've been very harsh on like Errol Spence and um, um, Bud Crawford for not matching up with um this same thing in mind as far as like them fighting three times over or uh Jamal Charlo um fighting Andrade with the same thing in mind. I mean like if you have a tough fight then run it back or or um fight three times, you know, who cares? 
you know, and it's a lot different for them because like those guys aren't generating the cash that like anybody that I just talked about is generating or was generating, if you will. I mean, and honestly is generating because while there's still uh, plenty able to generate um, big time paydays um, in the near future. But um, Bud Crawford, um, Errol Spence, if they have a match between the two, I mean, automatically they'd be a rematch at the, you know, at the very least. And then, you you know, if they, if those are two close fights, you know, you could run it back three times. Neither one of those guys have any fights um, that they could potentially have that um, are buzzworthy like that. If Errol Spence were to fight Pacquiao and beats him, nobody's going to say, like, oh, we need to see a Pacquiao-Errol Spence rematch, even if Errol Spence wins. You know, and if they do it, that's just a whack fight. I mean, I think Errol Spence-Pacquiao part one would be a, a kind of whack fight. I don't want to see that. Um, same thing could be said with Bud with Bud Crawford. I mean, like you know, if uh, Bud Crawford were to get the Pacquiao matchup, I don't want to see them fighting Pacquiao at all. I'd rather Pacquiao retire. Um, same thing with uh, Andrade. Like Andrade has plans on fighting Chris Eubank, which nobody wants to see that, especially me. You know, but if you were to fight Andrade, you know, you're talking big money unification match. Um, yeah. You know, um, fight three times. I mean, like, you know, if they're offering Charlo like 10 million bucks to 7 million bucks right now, in three fights, he can make 30 million bucks at the least. That's the bottom of where he's negotiating at. Like with a three or t he could probably make that in two fights with, uh, you know, with uh, Andrade or with the, with the money from the zone. But these fighters sell themselves short. Um kind of like discounting the potential that fighting their main rivals could net them. And the same could be circled back around to Anthony Joshua. I think three times, if a fight would have been good um, against Deontay Wilder, I think them fighting three times would have been bananas. I mean, what if one of, them, one of those matches would have been in the UK or um, in Saudi Arabia? You know, the Saudis would pay like killer money for that, man. Like, you know, but um, these fighters sell themselves short, and boxing is boxing. At the end of the day, any man could win, and boxing don't care about your, you know, your plans at the end of the day. And um, you know, people take losses along the way. You know, in hindsight, I mean, should Wilder have taken that fifteen million bucks to fight Anthony Joshua? I mean, like, you know, it's hard to say, like, not, not that it's hard to say, like, I know he's very prideful and didn't want to um, buckle into that kind of pressure of, um, of bowing in that negotiation. The rumor was that if he were to win in that first fight, that they were, that the split was to be 50-50. I mean, in hindsight, if they're paying Anthony Joshua, like, supposedly 70 million bucks to fight in Saudi Arabia against Andy Ruiz, after taking the loss to Andy Ruiz, how much would they have paid Wilder? Even if it's 50-50, you know, even if you're the victor and holding four belts and you still get a 50-50 split, I mean, what could you say? I mean, it sucks, yeah, but, you know, that's just two fights at the end of the day. You still probably would have had a Fury matchup down the line anyway, you know? You didn't have to really necessarily rush into the Fury fight. I also thought, like, you know, when... And this is kind of, like, going off the subject a little bit. Like, when Fury backed... Like, when Fury signed with with uh, Top Rank after the uh, Deontay Wilder match, I think that Deontay Wilder should have just said deuces. Um, not chased after the Fury rematch as much as he did. And taking on matches like Fury did. Because, like, he was just trying to, like, keep... Seemingly keep his name hot with... Um, you know, in comparisons to Joshua, like, you know, where Joshua already took a loss at that point, you know, the competition was, was kind of like dead at that point. If Joshua already took a loss and Fury went and um, backed out of an arena rematch with you and then goes sign with top rank and then fights um, bums while he's on top rank, then Wilder could have had a, a fight against, um, um, you know, some of these guys that are on PVC, the heavyweights that are coming up, you know, in the world, like um, the uh, Polish guy, um, 
the baby face assassin, forget his name, from Brooklyn. I, always, I haven't slept. But, um, you know, that could have been a match for a while there and then fight, you know, maybe Andy Ruiz, you know, after, you know, he takes that look, you know, like right now would have been a good chance to fight Andy Ruiz. But, um, you know, I, I just think, you know, and I say, I keep saying this of late, like I've turned the leaf as far as my thinking goes, like in a lot of ways, like I think that Eddie Hearn does a good job as far as a promoter goes. Especially if you subscribe to my argument that Eddie Hearn was maybe um, doing a lot of that talking about Wilder or disparaging talk of Wilder. Maybe because um, he was trying to defend his own fighter that didn't want to fight Wilder. But Eddie Hearn finds ways to make money in a different fashion than these other promoters do. I'm not saying that. He has that game down pat. I'm just saying that he's far better at doing that than the PBC or than top rank. You know, Eddie Hearn, like, it took a lot of guts to go fight in the Saudi Arabia. You know, if but Saudi Arabia was willing to pay. I don't care if you fight in the ice in Alaska or in the hottest parts of hell. And Hitler was signing the check or the devil himself. You know, if the fighters are all about, you know, prize fighting and getting the biggest prize, then it is what it is. You know, I'm not going to, you know, as long as it nets them the most money they could get, who cares? I don't care, like, if it's a communist regime or a racist regime, dictator, you know, uh, fascist. It is what it is, man. Like, you know, like, that. Let, you know, as long as they're cutting the check, like, and you're not doing anything um, unscrupulous for it, like, got nothing to do with you at the end of the day you're just entertaining some people that are willing to pay you it's what it what it boiled down to but the pbc like their um thinking is very unimaginative i think they steer fighters in the wrong direction a lot of the fighters that are um at the top of the food chain at the pbc are already heading into the twilights of their careers they're 30 years old just like uh anthony joshua is and uh just like canelo is and Canelo, you know, as much as I don't like him, and Anthony Joshua, as much as I don't like him, you know, they've had humongous fights. And I think that it took a lot of creativity from the people that um, are handling them to get them in that position. You know, I think other factors played into it, of course. But um, I think, you know, sometimes you got to be able to think on the fly and pivot your thinking and think of the long game rather than the popularity game you know, in a lot of these instances, or rather than like trying to um, go tit for tat with somebody when that somebody could lose. And Anthony Joshua did lose at the end of the day when Wilder was going tit for tat for him and trying to take on tougher opposition than him and Fury were um, taking, you know, just wasn't worth it at the end of the day in hindsight or in retrospect, whatever, you know, I don't know if I'm using either word correctly, but let me know what you guys think, man. Like, I hope you guys could uh, start coming on to my lives more. Um, I'm going to talk non-boxing more times. Like, boxing's whack. Um, I'm, I want to talk about other stuff. Um, check out my last video where I talked about my experience that I had uh, running with a uh, serial killer. I'm going to talk about a lot of um, hip-hop culture stuff. Like, not in a glowing fashion. Like, you know. More in a disparaging fashion. Um, and pardon self for um, maybe not having my thoughts collected like I know I should. But I haven't slept and I've been up all night. And also pardon self for I've been rocking these hats. But I got the uh, Corona dude, man. Like, haven't been able to get a haircut. And I'm kind of dying over here. Even though I'm kind of liking the uh, Wild Savage look. And my wife attempted to give me a haircut. With some scissors from a cutlery set the other day. And I mean, didn't look terrible, but not nothing crazy. Nothing good like that. But let me know what you guys think. With that, I'm out. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. If you're out in the tri-state area, it's beautiful outside. Like, um, wish I could join you in enjoying this weekend, but I got to work tomorrow. So, with that, I'm out. Thank you for stepping into the five playland. Peace.